Let's face it, your chord progressions suck and you're never going to be a good producer. Is what I would say if you didn't just click on this video. It's about the Guaranteed, the first thing you're doing wrong is you're not using easy progressions. You might be saying, yo, Ash, I don't want to use the same overused chords that Kid Leroy, William Eyelash, Justin Bieber. I want to be unique like Elenium or Seven Lions. My brother in Christ, they use the same chords. So don't sweat the progression. These progressions, even if they're simple, are your emotional base. I'll play a few progressions over a melody so you can hear how it affects the emotion of the songs. And I'm about to play what's called the most common pop progression ever. In major chord terms, that's the one, five, six and four. And even with this common chord progression, you can rearrange these exact same chords and make it a bit emotional. In this case, we're going six, five, four, and one. These progressions have been used in like 90% of popular music for decades. This uniqueness you're chasing doesn't come from some magical chord progression that nobody's ever come up with. Everyone uses them because they work. But you might have heard in this more emotional chord progression, it kind of ends weird. It doesn't feel right. Next thing you're doing wrong is you're ending it on the wrong chord. And what you can do to fix that is just don't end on the one chord. Don't end on the tonic. It feels like it ends or begins because this specific chord gives a mood of resolving and you want to avoid that. You want to pull your listener into the first chord of the progression. And this way you can extend it to make it last longer. It doesn't feel as repetitive. So this time we're going to end on the three and listen to the difference. And now that we have a solid progression, we can add even more emotion to it. Be careful, because moving on to the next reason your chord progressions suck, you're overdoing the emotional complexity. Now you've heard me, I've said it in all my other future based videos. Seventh chords add complexity. Now to make any chord a seventh, let's say you have your regular triad. You can turn Ableton scale on, we're in C major. If you have your regular one, three, five, seven, it's just over here. Skip a note and then add it on. Skip a note and add it on. Skip a note and add it on. And now I'm gonna go back to the cheesy pop progression. That's before and then after adding all the sevenths. feels like there's a lot more depth in those chords. I saw this really great comment. My issue is that I'm two years into a degree that's classically training my ears. There's always a lot of ambiguity in the major minor tonality provided by suspensions, meaning when our friend here is adding a bunch of notes, everything kind of starts blending together and it sounds kind of cringe. And I call this overextending. And what's actually happening here is I'm not playing a single chord. I'm playing the entire scale all at the same time. And even though this is actually a legit chord, you can write it out. This is really rarely used, obviously, even though I still see some people's super sauce stacks looking like bro. Simplify. Now the reason these like super hyper extended, hyper suspended chords exist is because they were written in classical or older styles of music that used more basic sounds like your pianos, your harpsichords, and the composers needed to make up for that lack of sound complexity through their chords and through their melodies. However, we're living in the modern days now and in future bass and color bass, any melodic bass, there's a lot more possibilities for complex sound design. So the chords actually have to be simpler than you think or you risk the cringe. But hang on, let me show you something cool. We can actually make this exact same chord work. 
Hey, it's not the worst. It's the right voicing changes everything. Let's bring back that emotional chord progression and let's move those chords over to everybody's favorite future bass sound. Okay, not great. Amateur producers will hear this and immediately say, um, yeah, it's my preset. I didn't EQ it. Let me see how I can glue the mid side compressor to the super side to the drum buzz perfectly. I'm gonna go look up that Instagram cheat sheet EQ. Stop that. What they fail to think about is that they are writing their chords without voicing or they're using a chord pack that doesn't use voicing at all. Either way, when I say voicing, that means to just rearrange your chords so that they don't sound like dog water. Just like there are easy progressions where they're tried and true, everybody uses them. There's also easy voicings. So voicings that just work. And I'm gonna show you the simplest one. You take your regular chord stack, you just select your three, you go shift up, move it up an octave, have a listen. From before, and after. Literally that, this is one of the most effective voicings. It instantly opens up your chord and gives it a full sound. No EQ, no EQ needed. And as a little sidebar as well, these open voicing works really well for color bass since that genre calls for less complex chords because of how deep the sound design aspect is of it. Just move the three on top. Now that you know this, you have like 90% of what you need to not have crappy, sucky, repetitive chord progressions. But from here on, the changes I'm about to show you are gonna be more subtle. But if you learn how to use these next few changes, they will ensure victory in your music production journey. And what a journey it's been. You spent hours toiling away at the studio, pouring your soul into your craft. You found the perfect snare and now your masterpiece is complete. What do you do now? Upload it to SoundCloud? hoping that it gets played by the clearly legitimate user 50031 with a very real profile picture. No. You know better. You're going to use a distributor like DistroKid to send your music to all the top streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music. You'll send it as a sound to be used by influencers around the world on TikTok and Instagram and you'll have full control over the masters, the art, and it's going to be expensive. For those who don't use DistroKid, that's right. Unlike other distribution services that make you pay per upload, DistroKid is only $20 a year, all while you keep 100% of your royalties. And as a viewer of my channel, I'm giving you an exclusive, elusive 7% off your first year. Simply use the VIP link in the description. What a wonderful sponsor. Thank you, Distributed. Now, let me tell you a little story. Next thing is you're not making your chord progressions playable. And now what I mean by that is before producing, I played classical piano for years, which eventually led me to joining one of my first bands. And in the band, the guitarist was kind of stuck up and he claimed himself as the sole songwriter. So essentially, I was brought into the band and he's like, here's a keyboard part and just play it. And I look at it and it's just playing the same chords he played, like on every beat. In my head, I'm like, yo, this is kind of boring. Let me add, let me add in my own extra notes, maybe little counter melodies, rhythms to match what the guitarist was doing, but like not make it too noticeable. I'm still lazy, I'm not trying to show off. And to be fair, he didn't notice either and was like, yo, those piano parts I gave you pretty fire, right? I'm so awesome. I did not stay in that band long. And this weird counterintuitiveness actually made the chords sound better. But it's weird because learning that skill is something I was never taught classically. Maybe I didn't pay attention. But the bottom line is, if you were to give the chords you write to a piano player and they're bored, your listener's gonna be bored as well. 
So let's take that progression that we just wrote and apply my piano player brain to it. So we're out here. These are seventh chords, voiced properly, and added drums. <laughs> Why does it still sound bad? Now I'm gonna make a very important decision here. In this case, I don't like how the sevenths sound. I don't like how the voices sound, especially on super saws. So I'm gonna remove the sevenths. Remember the last tip? So this is where my lazy piano brain comes in. We can use the same concept of inversions and voicing to make these chords more playable. Now this takes a little trial and error. You kind of look for shared notes. This one's a B. If I was to put that up there, this is a lot easier for me to, to play. Maybe I move this down there. Now I've got shared notes like that and I'm not moving my hand as much. Okay, let's go to the next one. Maybe let's take this and bring it down. And I'm, I'm kind of looking at this. I'm like, damn, these are a little too close together. Too many notes to play with my right hand. So let's make my left hand play it instead. And that can probably go down there. With enough practice, this comes easy. And afterwards, that should sound like this. By the way, if your progression already sounds good without all these changes, then you're good to just leave it. These are just tips you can use if you're struggling and you need to find that magic in your chord progression. Anyway, if you're like, yo, Ash, why would you bring up these sevenths if you're not even gonna use them? Well, trust me, I am gonna use them. So this is another tip. This is another one. You're not turning your voicings into melodies. That's right. What if I told you instead of blocking out and just stacking your sevenths on top of your chords, you use those same notes as like a little mini melody. And if you're on Ableton or FL, you can lock it into the scale and you write your chords like normal, like this, and then just start putting notes on top. Listen to the magic of extension melodies. It makes these progressions interesting enough to be played alone while still leaving room for any potential vocals or other sounds you want to add. So, you know what? Screw it. Let's take the same progression. Let's add a vocal on it. Splice. Show me your magic. Let's go. Look how slow this shit. Now we were a team, but I have my doubts coming to fruition now. If you could see how I was on the low, low but I give up, couldn't know. But the number one thing that's holding back your chord progressions is you're not thinking about rhythm. Why do you think there's a whole genre named after it? They're literally one note and it's different rhythms. I get it. Oh, that's a terrible joke. The, the word rhythm comes from an entire appropriation of a different subgenre of music. Okay, we're not gonna get into that, but what I'm talking about is look at this. This is the same progression, voicings and making it playable. Sam Melody, we've been playing all video, put it on the super saws, and adjusting the rhythm. So if we take a look at this, I'm pausing it at the snare, adding a one eighth rhythm, the bop, bop, bop. Timing is everything. And look at this, it gets even better when you use extension melodies and match the rhythm. Check this out. Now, that don't sound like some AI generated MIDI melody. And you have a better drop than gated super saws. Now, isn't that wild? These are all the different variations that we came with using the same chord progression. Of course, as always, these are just suggestions. Most of these tips come from centuries of music theory that I've distilled into a more digestible format. Music theory only exists because we need a way 
to understand why certain musical things work and why they sound good. But at the end of the day, it's practicing. It's writing song after song so that you have a sense of what sounds good, what works, even if you don't know the technical terms to describe it. If you make something that goes against a bunch of stuff that I told you here and it still sounds good, who cares? Plus, there's probably some type of explanation, honestly, in proper music theory terms, so don't even worry about it. Just try not to overthink it. Find your vibe. Go make some bangers. See you in the next one. Peace. Ooh, by the way, a final thank you to the VIPs on Patreon who are all on the screen now. You pay me to keep making videos like this, so honestly, thank you. And even if you knew a lot of this chord info already, even going over your songs and implementing these simple things can help so much and hopefully lead you to more inspiration. Like honestly, the right chords can make or break a tune. Do the thing, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to get 7% off your first year of DistroKid. Thanks also to them for sponsoring this video. Okay, that's all. Okay, bye. See you next time.